the routing we talked about, those are the individuals that are responsible for the process. You might have reviewers, notified users, change requesters, et cetera. And you can customize this during the engineering change order process, and we'll do that actually here in a minute. The last one is the graphical workflow to understand where the change order is currently at. Now this one kind of moved around a little bit. It actually went from the review state down to rejected. And if I click on any one of these cells, it's going to show me what's going on at that state. You can see down here at the bottom that the engineer rejected it, and you get a, you get a timestamp on when that happened. You also see up here that it eventually was approved. And again, I get an idea of what's happening based on some sort of time frame. And I can click around on all these, and I can see what's happening with, with that individual or that person that's logged in. So that gives you an idea of the engineering change order process and how the change order is formatted and it looks. So let's go ahead and do an actual change order here. So you can see over here on the left-hand side, I've got an engineering change order that's currently active. It's in my work list, and that means that I need to take some sort of action against that. So I'll click on that. And it's a shortcut, so it's automatically going to take me to that change order. Now, there's a lot of information that hasn't been entered yet, but there has been some that has been here. So I've got a title and a description. And we're going to go ahead and make some changes to this. So I'm going to edit this. Now, my role is I'm the change administrator, so I can come in and I can make formal changes. If I'm a reviewer, I don't have the ability to make any changes to the change order. I'm really just part of the process. I need to be notified of what's going on, and I can log in and I can see the information, but I don't have permissions to physically edit anything. Now again, we can certainly change that as we go along if needed, but in this case, we're just going to go ahead and move forward with this change order. So I'm going to select a few things down at the bottom. This is going to be an initial release. We'll just say cost of change. There's no impact on, on our inventory. There's no tooling change. This is an electrical project, so that really doesn't apply to this. I can say that this request came from engineering, but you can see I can create a predetermined list to pull from. Class type, we'll just say class type 2, and we're going to say that this is urgent. We need to get this done today. But this information down here is customizable, so what you see in front of you would change based on your engineering change order process. Uh, there's also a free text field, so I can come in here and I can type in not applicable since this does not relate to a customer or a vendor. If I go to the items area, this is going to show me all the electrical components related to the, these particular schematic drawings. You can see here that the title has the vendor part number that we purchased these from. It gives you a description. It's telling you that it's electrical data. And we can see now that it's all currently work in progress. We want to release this, so that's going to be automatically done through the change order process. At some companies, this list could get longer than what I've got here. And if I had to manually go through and change each one of these to release, it would take me a long time. So the change order process is going to do that for me automatically. The comments field, we're not going to, we'll, we'll do a comment here in a second. We're actually going to do a quick markup. But again, the comments field is going to organize all that information or all that collaboration going on with the change order. Now, when I go to the files area, there's going to be schematic drawings related to that electrical project. And when I click on that, it's going to load that into my viewer, and it's going to give me a series of tools, a series of markup tools. I can approve. I can add a couple different markups. You can see that up here at the top. I've got a lot of different tools available to me to, to do something with this change order. And in this case, we're just going to streamline the process, and we're going to approve this. And I can go through each one of these drawings, and I can approve them individually as I review them. If I do catch a mistake, I can mark up that mistake with these tools that are at the top of my, my markup environment. When I'm finished, I'll just hit Save. And it's going to ask me where to save that markup. There's rules in the background so that I can have it automatically place it somewhere, or I can browse to a particular location. And this, We're just going to hit Save on that. And now it's going to allow me to notify individuals that are part of the process. I'll just say approve drawing. And I'm going to add notification email here. I don't have to do that. That's a user interaction thing that I can do. Uh, we'll say OK to that. And now that I've created that markup, if I go back into the comments section, 
you can see now that it's captured that change or that markup and it's placed it in this area. And if I want to view it, I can right click and go to the attachments. Or if I'm another individual, maybe I'm the manager and I've caught additional mistakes, I can actually reply to these comments. So again, I can put that information into one little location. Now on the routing, I'm just going to create, I've already got a routing here, but I want to remove some individuals. Let's say in this case I want to fast track this and I don't need all these individuals to be part of the process. So I'm just going to go in here and hit edit and we'll get rid of a few people here. I'll get rid of the shop floor person. We don't need the designer. The administrator doesn't need to be on there. I can also add, so I can remove or add. And additionally, I can even change their roles. So if I want to give somebody the ability to approve where in the past they were a reviewer, I can change those roles as I move through the change order process. In this case, I'm okay with the routing. You can see there that I've gone ahead and everything is okay. Now, I do not have unanimous approval turned on. So in this case, you can see that the engineering manager is actually an approver. If I did have unanimous approval turned on, he would have to log in and approve this in order for it to move from one state to another. We'll just save this. And now when I go to the status, you can see it's sitting in the create state. So we'll just go ahead and submit this into the open state. When I do that, I'll just put a note in there. And again, I'll place a notification email. That way my engineering manager is going to receive an email notification that this has been in an open state. Now I'm going to hit refresh here, and what's going to happen is down here at the bottom, it's going to give me a notification. It's kind of like that email notification you get from Outlook when a new email comes in. So you're going to get notified through there. I would also receive an email telling me that this has moved from the open state or to the work state, or some. it has made some movement in that workflow that we showed you before. Now, if I want to quickly release this, you can see with all the arrows and directional things going on here, I can force approval. This way, you know, let's say I'm, I'm okay with all the changes. I'm the engineer. I know that everything is accurate. At least I hope it's accurate. And I want to move this forward in the process. So all I have to do is respond, and I'm going to force approval. Again, we can keep saying, you know, add notification emails if we want. In this case, I'll just say okay to that. Again, if I hit refresh, I get another notification down here in the lower right-hand corner that something has happened with that change order. Now, one thing I want to show you is currently all the items are in work in progress. But when I go from the approved state to the closed state, I'm going to set effectivity. So I'm going to apply a release state to that automatically. So all the related data that was in that items tab is automatically going to be moved from work in progress to released. We're just going to say released. I say OK. These are all the items that are related to that electrical project. In this case, I'm just going to say OK to that. And now it moves from the approved state to the closed state. Now, I'm going to hit refresh here, and you'll notice that my work list is going to actually become empty. Since it's been closed, I no longer have any type of role or responsibility related to that change order. So it removes that from my work list. And now I have nothing to do until a new one comes through. So that shows you how to do an existing engineering release order. So I've got data that hasn't been released before. And I want to initially release that to manufacturing. Now I can create different types of templates based on some different type of condition. So I'll create an engineering change order. And we'll show you how that process works. So I'll go to an item that I've got down in my shortcuts. And with this item, we want to add some specification documents Production has come through and they've asked for us to show them how this assembly goes together. Well, with Inventor, I have the ability to create um, basically an animation of how the thing goes together so that I can convey that to production and they can hit a play button and see exactly what the steps are involved for that change order. We'll get to that in a second and show you how that works. Currently, this is in the release date. So if I come in here and I try to hit edit on that, it's going to tell me, sorry, you can't do that unless it's in the work in progress state. So I can't do any type of at will changes just to come in here and quickly add that. I really need to do a formal engineering change order process to make some sort of change to the data. 